So if you don't know, the World Championship is coming up. It's gonna take place on September 7th in Seattle, Washington in the US. And there's a unique ban list for that event. If you don't know, there's a ban list for the OCG, the Japanese card game, and the Western card game called the TCG. They both have different limitations on cards based on the different design philosophies of each game. It's basically the same card pool, but balanced much differently. But in the World Championship, TCG players and OCG players play together, one against the other, in the true World Championship. That means the ban lists from each section need to be combined. And the harsher hit is what takes precedence in the event. For example, the OCG has maxi at three copies per deck, but the TCG has maxi forbidden from tournament play, which means that in the World Championship, there will be no maxi. But there is an upcoming ban list in the TCG at the end of August, and that ban list will affect directly on the World Championship ban list. And Konami has a chance to remove a lot of cards from the ban list to match the OCG ban list and allow them to be played in the World Championship. So let's discuss some of these cards. It's going to be a fun experiment to see maybe what Konami in the TCG can get rid of in order to allow it to be played in the World Championship. And before I begin, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Let's begin with my personal favorite, my boy, Link Karibo. Link Karibo is one of the more recently forbidden cards in the latest ban list, basically. It's a Link 1 that requires a level 1 monster, and it has a pretty solid effect of tributing as cost, as a quick effect, of a level 1 monster from your field in order to summon itself back to the field from the graveyard. Now, that effect is not incredible. I think summoning itself from the graveyard at a cost is relatively fair. But this card, of course, was abused in Snake Eye, the strategy that basically ruined the game for the past year, where the entire engine comprised of level 1 monster could just be turned into Link Karibos, and when Link Karibos already in the graveyard, could help those Snake Eyes dodge hand traps by tributing them as a quick effect. And also, since it was a dark monster in a fire deck, it allowed you more easily to go into Dark the Dark Charmer, which can summon a dark from your opponent's graveyard, go up into Promethean Princess, and start your combo all over again. It was obviously very strong. And the fact that Snake Eyes Poplar used Link Karibu to put itself in the Spell and Trap Zone to gain an additional card on field was obviously strong, but doesn't really make a difference because now people just use Relinquished Anima to do that. So can Link Karibu come back? I think it could. I think it would never have been banned if not for Snake Eye, and Snake Eye is probably on its way out. And it's kind of the same deal with Borlode Savage Dragon, a card that I was really hurt to see gone. Again, this card was another card utilized by Snake Eyes because Dia Bellstar is a level 7. Jet Synchron, which can be summoned off of the card that Dia Bellstar searches, is a level 1 tuner. And combined, they both make a Synchro 8, which is Borlode Savage Dragon. It does need a link in the graveyard to equip to gain negates and can once per turn negate any card effect. And of course, that's strong, but I think balanced. It requires links in the graveyard, it requires setup, it, it can't be put on the field as the first thing in your combo, like like Baron, and of course it's a very important piece in the Dragon Link strategy that have been obliterated in the past few years. And since Dragon Link won the World Championship last year, I think Dragon Link could use a boost and Link Karibu and Borlode Savage Dragon paying for the price of Snake Eyes power level should come back at least when Snake Eyes is dead. Now, the next card is Glow Up Bulb. It's been already unlimited in the OCG and it has a once per duel effect where it can summon itself back to the field. It would be very abusable to some extent, but again, since it's once per duel and it's already unlimited in the OCG, maybe there's a good reason to bring this card back. It obviously nerfed the Synchro strategy when it got banned and it was originally banned just to push Xyz monsters and stop people from playing Synchros. After that, it was released from the ban list and then banned again because of Crystron Halky Fibrex, which again is also gone. So what's the problem? It can enable some weird plays. It can enable Naturia Beast, which people don't really play right now. But with Hulk banned, Savage currently banned, Aurora Dawn banned, and even Linkross banned, which were the main enablers of this card's problematic aspect, I think Gub is definitely fine to come back. Red Reboot. You're gonna be mad, but I think Red Reboot could come back. Red Reboot is a counter trap card that you can activate from your hand by paying half your life points. It will negate a trap card activation and set that card back to the field, allow your opponent to set another trap from their deck and disable traps from the rest of the turn. It could be extremely unfair, but the trap cards today like Skill Drain, Dimensional Barrier, Daruma Cannon, Magic Deflector, 
and a lot of other trap floodgates are just more unfair in my opinion. The card is currently legal both in the OCG and in Master Duel, and of course, Konami wanted to push Labyrinth and Trap Strategy, so they banned it over here. So again, it is available in the OCG, maybe if Konami unbanned it in the TCG side, you could play it for Worlds. Konami is starting to hit more trap floodgates recently, and obviously people don't like the fact that it locks your opponent from activating trap cards for the rest of the turn, which is essentially a floodgate on its own, but there's currently no out to those trap floodgates, and it doesn't make sense that your deck has no answer to certain cards. Eva was banned in the Drytron format, obviously it can grab you two fairy from the deck, which means that it can promote disgusting abuse of a lot of very strong fairy monsters. Vanities, for example, Artifact Lancia, and of course, Herald of the Orange Light, which is a monster negate from your hand. It definitely promoted some sick things in the Drytron strategy, but now, given that Tritron is already so power crap, maybe there's a chance Eva could come back. It will be an extreme boost to Drytron, but given the fact that decks are much more resilient to what Drytron does today, and that combo decks, and specifically light and dark combo decks, have a lot of weaknesses with bestials around, maybe there's a chance Eva could come back, because again, it is legal in the OCG. Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, a card known in infamy for enabling the immense power of pendulum monsters. It has a soft once per turn effect that allows you to go plus two in card advantage and essentially search any pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. It also syncs really well with pendulum scales that can also give you an advantage when destroyed since it will destroy a card in order to activate its effect. Now, Electromite is legal both in Master Duel and the OCG, which has a very big card pool of pendulum monsters like we do. Now, Pendulum Monsters is already so power crept by cards like Kashira Shangri Ira or Snake Eyes Flamber Dragon that can just put cards in the Pendulum Zones or Shangri Ira that can block them. And Electromite obviously needs to be at one copy because its effect is soft once per turn. However, is this the difference maker between making Pendulum Monsters playable or not? Maybe not. And another Pendulum favorite is Performage Plushfire, which got an errata as a hard once per turn. Previously, you can pop with Plushfire as many times as you wanted, but now you can only do that once and again following the errata and a reprint it was released back into the OCG. So we are expecting the errata stateside and hopefully this card can also come back with a different card text. Heavy Storm. This card will for sure come back. A very old favorite destroying every spell and trap on the field obviously promoted some disgusting things. Being able to destroy a lot of your own cards could generate an advantage. Decks like Unchained or just outing your own floodgates could be very beneficial after you let them kill your opponent for one turn and then you actually want to play. But Konami has released the card in the OCG and recently has released the card in Master Rule as well, as recent as of two weeks ago. So Konami probably has a strategy to bring that card back. And if Harpy's Feather Duster is at one, it could make sense that Heavy Storm is as well. And given the fact that Red Reboot will probably remain banned, this is a little bit of a better answer to back row decks. MX Saber Invoker. It's a rank 3 that can detach in order to special summon an Earth Warrior or Beast Warrior from your deck. Obviously a very strong card, a lot of extra cards that have special summoning abilities directly from the deck usually find themselves on the Forbidden and Limited list, and there's a lot of them. MX Saber Invoker was very popular obviously in Zodiac format, being able to summon any starter using things like Speed Roy Terror Top that on its own is a rank 3, so it was very very, very consistent and of course one zodiac means full zodiac combo so again it was very strong goki as well probably extremely power crept at this point and nobody's gonna play goki because of mx saber invoker probably because of other reasons as well and now mirage stalio might be a bit of a far comparison but again mirage stalio is probably the Salamangrate equivalent to those decks, with the same purpose that MX Saber Invoker served for them. And while Mirage Talia was in fact on the Forbidden list, it recently was removed. And Salamangrate is solid, able to play, but not a strong deck by any means, even with the recent fire support. So MX Saber Invoker was also released in Master Duel and the OCG recently, and TCG will probably follow suit. Some more Burgos Sovereignty, being able to special summon any winged beast monster from the deck at the end phase, and being able to protect your winged beast from targeting. That's actually a very strong effect. Now, usually what you would do previously in decks like Bird Up Tri Brigade, you would summon a barrier statue of the Stormwinds from the deck to 
seal the deal and lock your opponent into wind winged beast monsters. And when that was gone, you could summon Apex Avian from your deck to get another Omni Negate completely for free, which is kind of insane. But the fact is that not a lot of decks would be able to run some Morgue now. Maybe that's a bit of a power boost to decks like Tri Brigade and Bird Up that, in my opinion, could use it. Similar to MX Saber Invoker, this card will see play in very specific decks, but it might limit design space in the future. Once a Winged Beast archetype comes up, it's gonna be probably a little bit too powerful, but some more is legal in Master Duel and the OCG. And lastly, that grass looks greener. Personally, one of my favorite cards, never played it myself, it was printed once and then immediately banned. This card is seeing a bit more restrictions in the OCG recently. It did go from three to two to recently to one, and it's definitely a powerful card. It's also at one in Master Duel. But given those 60 card piles of push with a card like grass, could be beneficial for design space and deck building. Right now, you will usually see decks like Infernoid or Branded play it, and that's basically it. Not a lot of decks can benefit from sending cards to the graveyard. Obviously, you have decks like Tier Limits that would maybe experiment with this, but Tier Limits is at a place where it's not doing a ton of harm into the game. And while you want to mill the good names, but also want to play 60 for grass to resolve, I think it's a solid trade-off. Experimenting in the TCG with one grass could actually be a really interesting play. Again, Branded doesn't need support at the moment, but decks like Infernoid definitely do. With recent support that didn't really work, and the deck not seeing a ton of success at the moment, combined with the fact that it is a little bit pushed through the Sinful Spoils engine being level 1 fires, it could be cool to give it a push using Grass Looks Greener. So those are the cards that could come back in the upcoming ban list to sort of level the playing field with the OCG. And again, all of those cards are legal either in the OCG or in the OCG and Master Duel. So you know there's a possibility they will show up at Worlds. Leave your comment below with cards you think should be unbanned for the World Championship. I think it's one of the more interesting places to see Yu-Gi-Oh! at play and it's such a unique format we would want to see as many cards available as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.